Crystal's small request for a blanket led to the collection of hundreds. The tan part of the semi-automatic rifle is called a bump stock. It's a completely legal accessory. Believe it or not, we found a golf bag and a pair of ice skates among hundreds of shoes at this illegal levy dump site. Border Patrol says the extreme cold can have severe consequences for immigrants who are heading north into the United States. So tonight we wanted to get a sense of how cold the water is. We're actually tracking it right now with this thermometer. Hunters left behind dozens of shotgun shells here on this IBWC levy. The city of Alamo says there should be a minimum of 10 feet from structure to structure in this mobile home park. And as you can see, Things got a little closer than they should have. Working on the Rio Grande is dangerous for the men and women of Border Patrol. Injuries range from bug bites to objects being hurled at them from the other side of the river. Officials say 25 cars caught fire here at the future home of Chico's Auto Parts. We measured the length of unpaid border fence Lambert says is in his backyard, and it would be about the length from this piece of scrap metal to here about 100 feet away. Yes, Carrie, the only evidence that you'll find of a construction site here are holes like these. Dorothy's famous ruby red slippers are in need of saving. But not from the Wicked Witch of the West. The iconic red shoes worn by Judy Garland are almost 80 years old and are definitely showing their age. The Smithsonian Institution, which features the shoes in their National Museum of American History, has launched a Kickstarter campaign. Their goal is to raise $300,000 to restore the sequined shoes. Some local fire departments find themselves with their hands tied when responding to calls. Savannah Collins joins us now in the studio with more. Savannah, there's been scenarios when firefighters have literally had to stand and watch as the buildings have been burning. How long will this persist and why was that the case to begin with? The devices he used are called a bump stock. Channel 5's Ryan Nelson went to a gun expert and saw the difference for himself. The tan part of the semi-automatic rifle is called a bump stock. It's a completely legal accessory that increases the firing rates for these semi-automatic weapons. Today we met with one Valley gun store owner who shows us exactly how this gun compares to a fully automatic rifle. A hail of gunfire rained down on Las Vegas concert goers on Sunday night. The sounds of rapid fire left many wondering if Stephen Paddock used automatic weapons. Law enforcement officials say at least one of the 23 weapons in Stephen Paddock's hotel room were modified with this, a bump stock. Keep in mind that all of these, these uh, add-ons to these weapons have all been approved by the federal government. So none of these are illegal, none of these are restricted. Valley gun store owner Brian Guerra showed us how the bump stock modified weapons compare to fully automatic. Guerra is licensed by the federal government to manufacture and sell fully automatic weapons to law enforcement. And I'm going to take you through what regular semi-auto is, is like, then we're going to go to uh, semi-auto with the uh, bump stock, and then I'll show you uh, full auto. First up, the standard semi-automatic AR-15 with no add-ons. It takes Guerra about six seconds to discharge 30 rounds. That's a firing rate of about five rounds per second. Next, the AR-15 with a bump stock. In four seconds, Gedai clears his magazine. That's a firing rate of about seven rounds per second. The bump stock replaces the gun's standard shoulder stock. It essentially uses the gun's recoil to bounce the weapon against the shooter's trigger finger. Yes, it increases the firing rate, though it doesn't carry the same consistency. Finally, the automatic AR-15. In less than two seconds, Geta empties an entire 30-round magazine with one pull of the trigger. That's a firing rate of at least 15 rounds per second. Geta says videos emerging from Las Vegas lead him to believe some portion of the attack was carried out with modified semi-automatic weapons. Full autos are very well-tuned machines, and they um, have a very consistent shot uh, pattern sound. A well-tuned machine that's difficult for civilians to legally get their hands on. Investigators are still working to determine if any of the weapons used in Paddock's attack were fully automatic. In La Feria, Ryan Nelson, Channel 5 News. Well, an elementary school assignment turned a valley-wide initiative to grant a Christmas wish for one little girl. And at the top of her wish list, a blanket. Channel 5's Ryan Nelson is live in the studio with her story. Ryan. 
that small request is making a big impact on a small community. It all started with three words, Dear Santa Claus. This Christmas I will like a ball and a food. I need a blanket. Seven-year-old Crystal's plea to St. Nick for basic necessities was heard around the valley. Word spread after her teacher, Ruth Espiricueta, posted a photo of the letter to Santa on social media. When she asked for a blanket, I mean, it just broke my heart and it made me realize that some of these kids don't have anything to stay warm at night. You know, they sleep on the floor. As word spread, people started showing up to the elementary school with donations in hand. The school's leaders decided to organize a blanket drive. Crystal's small request for a blanket led to the collection of hundreds. And now every student here at Monte Cristo Elementary School will go home with their very own. Cristina Rodriguez was one of the many Valley residents to donate blankets and other items to the kids. Rodriguez went to Monte Cristo Elementary as a child. To see that they don't have not even a blanket or food, it breaks me. It breaks my heart. After speaking to Crystal's mother, we learned she was thinking about much more than herself when writing to Santa. La niña escribió la carta pensando. She wrote the card thinking about her brother. She said she wanted the ball to play with him, food to have food at the house, and a blanket because the house is too cold. Crystal had a special message for St. Nick. Thank you for the presents. Uh, some Valley landowners are still waiting to get paid. The federal government owes them for the land they're using for the border fence. Channel 5's Ryan Nelson tells us they're not alone. Imminent domain allows the United States government to use private lands for public good. The Bush administration used eminent domain to gain access to land needed to build border fencing. Almost a decade later, some private landholders are still stuck in limbo. San Benito's Orlando Lambert is waiting for the day the check is in the mail. Have you been paid yet? No, I'm sure I haven't gotten paid yet. The federal government used a stretch of Lambert's land to build a border fence. Payment was promised. That was nearly a decade ago. Lambert is still waiting for the elusive $1,000 in compensation. The only thing they told me was uh, too many cases in court and they had to go uh, one by one until my number came up. The Department of Justice tells Channel 5 325 imminent domain cases along the U.S.-Mexico border were open in 2008. Nine years later, 85 cases are still pending litigation. Some of Lambert's neighbors got paid and even negotiated terms. Yes, they did pay me, but they made a proposal of $10,000 per the amount of feet. They were like 248 feet long. I did not accept because I told them I wanted $17,000 since they asked me to put the amount on it, and I asked for $17,000. Then they told me the amount they could give me was only $12,500. I accepted. I had no problem. They took long with paperwork, and they gave me the money with a check with no problem. We measured the length of unpaid border fence Lambert says is in his backyard and it would be about the length from this piece of scrap metal to here, about 100 feet away. A small portion of his land is on the other side of the fence. Visiting the other side isn't easy. And then you're on that side and Border Patrol is just hounding you what you're doing back there. Uh, do you have permission and this and that. So I'm just better off staying on this side. Lambert says he still sees illegal activity along the border. Lambert chose not to fight his case in court. Channel 5 is still waiting for details from Customs and Border Protection and the Department of Justice about the reason Lambert's payment is still pending. Reporting in the studio, Ryan Nelson, Channel 5.